What's up, man? Is this uh, is this Max? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> All right. I think How we. You doing, I don't know what happened with uh, with Skype. Yeah, but the, my internet here. I mean, uh, our mountain house and the internet's not so good. So I'm just using my uh, my my friend's shell phone. <laughs> All right. Can you hear me? Okay. I can. Yeah. All right. So, uh, all right, then uh, let me close out Skype. I don't need that no more. So tell us, man, what's going on in the world of Max Cavalera? I'm uh, just getting ready to tour, man. Um, I've been doing a bunch of uh, also writing. Uh, I'm working with, uh, working with my son a lot on the new Go Ahead and Die record. Um and uh, just yet yeah, really thrilled about playing Beneath the Remains and Arise. Uh, that's going to be just awesome. That's going to be a blast. Um, looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, keep keep uh, keep busy, man. You know, keep keep uh, creating metal as much as I can. <laughs> well, I got to say, man, you're a busy dude, man. You got so many. There, there's so many different things that that. Uh, I could talk to you about, you know, as far as uh, the things that you've done. We could be here all day, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that. That's without counting soccer and American football. <laughs> Hell yeah, man! Uh, so, yeah. so, so, you guys are already working on another on a, another album for uh, "Go Ahead and Die." Yeah, we're Fuck. writing right now. Fuck, that's badass, man. That that last record was awesome. Yeah, this one uh, is going to be even better. Uh, we're putting more thought in it. We uh, we're going to spend more time uh, with it. So um, I always like second records, second albums. I think uh, it's when uh, you kind of like you kind of know more what you want to do with it. The first one was kind of a like a basic idea, but I think we want to go further down in into the. Uh, into the you know the 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 idea of that of of that project uh, it's really in with my uh, my son and just bringing different kinds of uh, feelings to it a lot of it based on the, the early uh, matter that we start listening to it when I form sepultura and stuff you know so that's gonna be a lot of fun man you know I'm, I'm doing I'm doing that. I'm also um, uh, pretty much done with the new Soulfly that's coming out in August. Um, and of course, uh, uh, Beneath the Remains and Arise tour. We added the other day that Daniel from Possessed is going to play guitars and uh, Mike is going to play bass. Um, so it's killer. It's a killer lineup. We are playing more songs from those records than we did the first one. Um, so I think everybody's going to really, really love this uh, this uh, adventure, man. It's like going back in time and playing those timeless records. I love that shit. And for me, kind of maybe my favorite Sepultura era yeah. has been if the remains that I rise. I'm partial to the the death thrash that we infused on those records. Um, so playing that, was, uh, especially now after pandemic and we what's going on in Europe right now, these records are perfect for, for that, for right now to play them live right now. Feels very, very, uh, pretty. Hell yeah, man. Hell, you know, those two records, that's uh, that's really where 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 I got into Sepultura when I was a kid, man. Uh, I, I remember, I still remember hearing um, the cover of Orgasmatron and fucking uh, Dead Embryonic Cells and shit like that. They were playing it on the radio. There was a local college station that I used to listen to when I was a kid, and uh, I used to tape record the shows. And I had those songs on there, man. I used to wear them out, dude. And then I went and got the record uh, Rise and Beneath the Remains. Fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, it's like, 
that was a great time in, in metal in general. I think that the whole 89, 90, 91, and you had the means of so many good things like, uh, you know, in Tomb first record, mm -hmm. I think dropped in 91, uh, uh, Grower, Carcass, Napalm, um, and then on this side here, America, we had, you know, Deicide and Death and Morbid Angel. Um, yeah, so there was Angel Possessed. And we're right in the middle of all that and writing. And I think it's been like a lot of fans really reacted to Arise, to believe their mains and Arise in a positive way because it was like, exotic a band coming from south america from brazil like this exotic thing exotic notion they never heard anything like that and music itself i think the combination um it was not it, it, it wasn't only metal and it wasn't only trash metal and it wasn't only hardcore but it was all the three of those that, that created the you know the bulk of, of, of the uh, of, of the energy, the raw energy of those records, and we did some of the first videos for it. I mean, you know, beneath the remains, we had the, the video for Inner Self in Brazil, and then we finally came to America to record Arise in Florida for sound, and we made the videos for Dead Embryonic Cells in, in Arizona. And uh, I was in Death Valley. Um, and you're right, Orgasmatron was a big song in it. It was a big cover for us. Actually, we won MTV Award Brazil with Orgasmatron. The video of Orgasmatron um, got us to, to win the, the best uh, best video in Brazil. And they flew us to, to America to celebrate and be part of the MTV festivities that's where we um uh, that's where i met uh, Netfield, and uh, he told me that he liked the uh that embryonic cells video and i freaking shit my pants <laughs> you know it was it was fucking cool to hear one of your idols telling you he likes your video man it was like one of those very special moments uh, that you treasure forever so so much things happened on all with those two records we did the biggest tour ever was the Arise tour. We went to Indonesia, Russia, Australia, South America, uh, US, Canada, and Europe. Uh, it was incredible. Uh, uh, we, we did some tours with Obituary and Sadas. And of course, a little bit later, we did the uh, New Titans on the Block with the uh, Napalm Death, Sick of It All, and Second Reich. Um, all of that was part of the uh, of the Arise tour. It was a, was a big tour, so we have a lot of great memories from that time. Um, so yeah, so we get to relieve them a little bit with this tour. Um, I think it's great, man. I think it sounds really cool because we got some really badass amps. And the shit sounds real, real massive now with the with with the technology. Uh, you can make those songs sound even better than the original. And uh, and I look forward to that. And having great players like Daniel and and Mike and Igor, uh, it's gonna be a blast, man. It's like uh, yeah, to me, I feel like I'm a kid. And you know, again, you know, I feel like I'm a like a like a like a teenage kid because I love those records so much. Uh, I never stopped liking them, and I think I also love that they influence so many of the good bands that are uh, out right now. Uh, everybody from uh, 200 Stab Wounds to Gate Creeper, uh, they all grow up in these records, especially beneath their remains and arise, and they worship those records and. Uh, it's good to pay tribute to them the, in the best, in the best brutal possible, honest way that we can pay that we can pay tribute to these records. We're gonna do it. Hell yeah, man! You know, uh, it, it makes me think about uh, 
I remember being a teenager, and uh, I remember I got a, I, when I got a new stereo system, I got this big stereo system, and I was really proud of it, so I, I called some of my friends, and they came over, and uh, we're getting stoned, we're sitting there smoking weed, and I'm like, man, well, we got, you know, we got to blast something on the stereo, and I put Inner Self from Sepultura on there, and, uh, you know, the way it kicks off, but then that part where the double bass comes in, you could see the speakers fucking bouncing out of the fucking boxes, man. We were just sitting there looking at it like, whoa, man, <laughs> it's yeah, so heavy. That's, <laughs> that's the way to do it. That's the best way to do it's it. Still, uh, it's still to this day, man. That's one of the songs that I use to test. Like, if I put new stereo in my car, man, I'm going to put that shit in there and I'm going to play it to hear it, you know, because yeah. that's, that's a test. Well, the, the, the cool thing about the, uh, to me, the, about these records, they, they had a lot of personality, you know, they're like, they were not like the best sounding records, uh, but, but they had so much personality in, 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 in uh, originality. It was cool. It was like the combination of Scott Burns production and the way he recorded the drums. And he really was very knowledgeable of, of the drumming especially double bass like not many people knew how to record double bass back in those days yeah uh and scott already had worked with obituary and death and uh, and morbid angel so he, he knew what he was doing uh so for us to to have this this this, produ- this guy come and produce the record for us was, was a killer uh because we we're, we're still so young, we didn't really know what to what to do, and was really inexperienced in the studio. And uh, yeah, I remember recording beneath the remains. It was we recorded at nighttime. Uh, the studio was only available uh, for us from midnight to seven, so it was crazy. It was like graveyard hours and and uh, nocturnal recordings, but. Uh, yeah, every day, like around two, or three in the morning, that's where we're hitting the, the you we're hitting the best parts of the song. It's like it's three in the morning, everybody's sleeping, and we're making all these rockers in the studio. It's great, um, and then we sleep all day the next day, and 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 then do that all over again the next day. Um, it was a special record to make. I think it's, even today, I talked to my friend Arthur Risk. He's, he produced the Cavalera and Power Trip records. And he, he tells me that to him, Believe It Remains is the most raw metal record he ever heard. Um, there is something about that, what we capture at that time, mm-hmm. that was very, very timeless and, and very unique. Uh, and so that's why it's, it's, it's a huge honor and, and a huge, um, which I, I take a lot of pride in, may, in in playing these records now, now that we have more experience and wisdom and all that shit. Um, you get to play the songs like even better than when we wrote them, when we first made them, because um, you got you get you got all the experience behind your, your playing now, so you can play them really good. Um, I always look forward to that. Like I said, when. Uh, when the idea came to do these kind of tours, we did we did return to Roots first. It was a huge success. It was great, but Roots was never really my favorite uh, Sepultura record. Uh, when we did Believe the Remains, I was really fired up. I look forward to do the other ones. You know, Chaos would be would be a good one, and eventually the early stuff, Morbid Visions, uh, the Black Metal shit would be awesome. Would be really cool, but uh, definitely. Uh, Believe the Remains Arise definitely very special era very special records and we're gonna play them as as brutal and as honest as we can play them um, so I think a lot of people some people never seen it before they'll get to hear it from the first time some people seen it and get to see it again and uh, and I think it's, a, it's great there's a whole new generation of, of young metalheads that get to experience this 30 years later uh, they get to feel the magic of these records all over again I think that's uh, that's amazing man. It's, it's it's so so great to be to be here to be alive and be able to do this for the fans and for ourselves uh, 
it's it's really really an, uh, an amazing thing absolutely man absolutely and these songs they definitely do uh transfer over to like as in the live versions have so much uh it's a different type of energy i don't want to say it's more energy but it's 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 a different type of energy i remember I, i've seen you i've seen you live with uh several of the different bands that you've been in uh, but I did see you with Sepultura. I think it was the Roots tour. You were, I think you were opening for Ozzy in Phoenix, Arizona. I can't remember if that's that's which one it was. But I, I just, I, but I remember when you guys played some of the older songs, how crazy the crowd went, and that feeling that we all had, you know, because uh, not that the songs were any better. I mean, I love the Roots album. I love Chaos AD. I love all of them, but. There was something about some of those older songs because we'd grow up, you know, we grew up with them and they were just embedded in us, you know. There's something Yeah, I I, and I think that's that's the key here is is uh, I like playing to me especially the the songs that never got much attention. Um uh, we get to treat them in the same way that we treat a big song like Arise or uh, um, Inner Self that were like video songs. Um, if we can do that with other songs like Stronger Than Hate and um, Sarcastic Existence and Primitive Future, you, you're you really getting something special because you're getting the full, uh, you're getting the full experience of those records. Uh, and, and, and that's what's cool about metal, man. You know, it's not about hit singles and of course some songs that are more popular than others uh, that doesn't mean they're better songs I don't I never believe that I think I think sometimes in a lot of Metalhead's uh, albums uh, every Metalhead favorite song is different from each other because of that so your your favorite Daft song it's very different from your friend's favorite death song. Um, so it's kind of like different from pop music and, and other styles of music where they have the hit singles, they have the hit songs. This, uh, this, this kind of records, they don't really have that. Um, and to me, I feel that a song like Stronger Than Hate is as important as that embryonic cells. Um, and I try to play them both with the same intensity and the same energy um, because I love both of them the same, you know. So so that's great because that's kind of like the original idea that these songs is going to give to the people. But you're right. Um, there is something about playing older songs that really uh, hits people in, 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 in the heart, man. They feel it. They're like... Yes, I've been listening to this song for thirty years, and I get to hear this. I get to hear this shit live now. It's fucking awesome. It's amazing, and uh, that's that's great. That's like that's how metal should be anyway. That's uh, when you get when you get to do things like that. And and me and Igor were like, you know, one of the few survivor, you know, metal brothers playing metal from from that era. They're still together and still uh, connected. Um, so it's. Uh, it's a blessing to be able to, to do this with him so many years after. Uh, I mean, I think Arise uh, commemorated 31 years uh, last week or something. Um, and uh, it, what a better way to to uh, commemorate this record than playing them live. I think it's, it's, uh, it's going to be great. A lot of the show is going to be packed. And I look forward to really, really digging into my in, into the young Max Cavalera psychic of those songs and uh, try to enjoy them as much as I did when I wrote them and uh, and that's the key you know it's like because uh, if, if you're not enjoying it if you're not having fun with it don't fucking do it just don't do it um, I still I'm a metal head at heart I'm a huge metal fan of new bands old classics I listen to all that all the time and uh, uh, it, it is it is an amazing thing that I get to do that uh, at this stage of my career after I've done so many other things and projects you get to 
pay attention to these very two special records, it's uh, it's it's a great thing that to be able to do that. Man, it, and you're you're absolutely right about you know the fact that uh, you and your brother are still still able to get up there and do this, you and Igor, man. Because uh, for us the fans, you know, um, I've always thought of you guys as like the death metal version of. Uh, Eddie Van Halen and Alex Van Halen or Dimebag and Vinnie Paul, you know, but we don't have them anymore, but we still got you guys and we can still go see you. Yeah, and that's, man, that's, that's, uh, I mean, my relationship with, with Igor is very special. We, we've been through everything together and there's a little thing between us. It's almost like telepathic. We can read each other thoughts and and the way we play uh is unique too the way me and him get together and jam um there is this chemistry that i don't have with anybody else that i play with um the chemistry with all the other that i play with like my my son in zion and soulfly and um you know the killer BQ guys the go ahead and die. Got There's definitely a, a a unique chemistry in in my brotherhood with Igor that goes all the way back to when we were just two young little shitheads from Brazil, uh, you know, getting in trouble in Brazil, robbing skulls and shit like that. Um, because we've been through all that together, we have this just huge. Uh, just, just a huge amount of of uh, experience that we bring. And the other thing I was on top of it, I don't know what happens, but I think a lot of times when I'm playing live with Igor, people get, it's like they're getting a license to fuck shit up. They, they, get, <laughs> they, they, they just lose it, man. They just go for it. And I seen some crazy shit playing with Igor. Um, back in the day and now and, and recently uh, we uh, we just play like right before the pandemic we played in Mexico and uh, it, it was it was the, the, the Roots album but in the end of it we play a bunch of older shit we play like Troops of Doom and uh, Case of Spades and all that and I, I remember back there was like 40,000 people but back back in uh uh, far away, I could see these huge columns of fire. They, they were setting shit on fire, um, and that looked crazy. And, and just a, it just looked awesome. I, I, I don't know how safe it was. It's probably not very safe, <laughs> but it looked it, it looked badass. And it was like I look at it. He's like, dude, check it out. They're burning shit, man. You know, it was like all these black smoke coming up, and uh, I was playing Troops of Doom, and it just felt right. It felt very metal and. Uh, it's something that happens when I play with him. It's like they get a license to to to, to destroy the wherever they are, man. It's great, and I love that because that's kind of like that's like the primitive uh, feeling that I get from these songs that they evocate uh, those instincts, man. It's great. It's like very primal, very raw, and uh, it just comes out when you play those songs. It just, yeah, I mean. The breakdown of that embryonic cells, I'm going to lose my mind every fucking night. You know, I already <laughs> know it. You know, that's like, it's guaranteed that when that moment comes, yes, it's time to lose our shit. It's time to like, almost like you get possessed in the stage and, and you go to a different dimension, uh, which I love it. I love doing that anyway. So I look forward to play these little, little sacred parts of songs that are embedded on on people's uh dna you know it's gonna be awesome yeah man uh, it, any chance that uh we might get a live album out of this uh tour or lineup oh uh, we haven't really talked about that yeah we i know that we're gonna do more touring um because a lot of people in florida were pissed off that we're not going to florida and a lot of canadians are mad uh so i think we're gonna have to do another run uh sometime later um but yeah it, it's anything's possible man i love i love the, the the 
the idea is open you know it's uh if we can find a cool uh, a cool place with the right uh, equipment uh we might be able to to capture that it'll be, it'll be great because i think it's a special event that should be captured live and uh you know maybe uh Maybe we get a, a live album or like DVD out of there or something. It'd be cool, um, but nothing official yet. Fuck yeah, man! Well, Max, I gotta tell you, man. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of shows, but when I look back, one of my favorite shows that I've ever seen in my entire life. And it was actually the first time that I ever heard Soulfly. I don't know if you remember it. It was the New Year's Evil uh, show in Phoenix, Arizona. It was Black Sabbath's reunion. And they had Pantera, Slayer, Megadeth, and Soulfly opened up. Do you remember that? What a shitty lineup, <laughs> <laughs> dude. Oh uh, man, that's just like that's that's great. That's what I'm. Yeah, it was a great day, man. I can't believe we got invited to that, and it was in our hometown. Um, I actually got a funny story about that. So, um, a couple months before that. I think it was like a year before that show. I went to do a photo shoot uh, where they were building the stadium, the the uh, the, Di- the Diamondback Stadium, mm-hmm. baseball stadium, and I got kicked out. I couldn't do the photo shoot there. They they kicked me out. <laughs> um, so, so so I remember I told the guy that kicked me out. I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'll just come and play. I play this venue and I. When, when this when this thing is ready joking right he's like joking with the guy um and, and he looked at me like yeah sure you will uh you know <laughs> uh, and and we were the first metal show there and we so is the first metal band to play that stadium how crazy is that that is crazy he, he didn't know who you were nah and he didn't give a shit either he's like nah <laughs> you're not doing a photo show yeah you need permit blah 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 and I, like uh, and and uh, yeah, you gotta get out of here. I'm like, all right, don't worry. I just come. I'll just wait till you finish, and I'll come and play in this, <laughs> on, 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 you know, on your stadium. It's like, yeah, right. Well, uh, sure, you know. <laughs> and it's it's actually exactly that happened, man. It was crazy. Uh, but yeah, that night was insane. I mean, just watching so many greats, you know, Slayer, Pantera, um, Black Sabbath. It doesn't get any better than I think the only one that can top that maybe is uh, we did one at Hyde Park uh, in England it was a it was a free show and again it was Black Sabbath uh, headlining um, and it was with Motorhead, um, Mount Garden, and Fate No More. Hell yeah, man! Uh, so it's a little bit of a different lineup, a little bit more classic, you know. Uh, but yeah, you got to see Motorhead, you got to see Soundgarden, and um, those are not around anymore. Uh, so very, very uh, lucky to, to, to witness those shows, um, which, which, which goes back to why it's so special to really enjoy this moment. You don't know how long we're going to be here, man, you know. Um, you really got to really enjoy the moment to, to the maximum you know and I, I I say that with, with, with the like from the heart for the fans as well when you get to that venue really enjoy the show because you don't know when that's going to happen again um, it's a special thing it's a special event um, I'm looking forward to that and, uh, and, and like I say hopefully in the future uh, we get to to pay homage to the other records as well. We have all those other ones, um, Chaos and, and Morbid and uh, Schizophrenia. Those are all great, great records. And uh, uh, even even some of the Soulfly stuff, I would have loved to do a, a, a tour celebrating the first Soulfly, uh, playing that, that album in its in entirety or, or, or something like that in the future would be cool. It's, it's cool to make this homage uh, tours paying homage to special things that are meaningful for you in your life and the fans share that with you um, and definitely at the top of the list beneath the remains and the rise is very high on people's list uh, it's very high on my list and um, yeah we're gonna start practicing soon and uh, we're gonna deliver man it's gonna be all balls out no bullshit uh Bruno as you can get. I know Igor is gonna play fast than normal, which is all good. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, we're gonna drink our Red Bull before the show, and and, <laughs> and uh, we're gonna fuck shit up. It's oh, gonna be great. Shit. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. All right, Max. Well, uh, I'm about out of questions for you. Is there anything else you want to let your fans know? Uh, thank you, man. That was great. Um, thank you for the the interview and uh, the support of uh, of, of, of everything you know you do for Mato and, and supporting us and supporting the tour and um, yeah just want to let the fans know be there you know because there's going to be a, a, a unique experience a very 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 fun nostalgic night of metal fuck yeah well before I let you go can I get you to make us a station tag of course all right, whenever you're ready, say something like, this is Max Cavalera, and you're listening to Metal Devastation Radio. What's up, everybody? This is Max Cavalera, and you are listening to Radio Devastation. Oi! <laughs> Wait, oh, it's, it's Metal Devastation, right? Yeah, Metal Devastation yeah, let Radio. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. All right. What's up, Metalheads? This is Max Cavalera. You are listening to Metal Devastation! Stay brutal. <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Love it, dude. All right. right on, man. Nice talking to you, brother. Hey. I hope I'll see you. Absolutely, man. I'll be there, dude. Ready to bang my head. All right. All right. Take care, man. All right. Later. Cheers. <laughs> There you have it, folks. Max Cavalera from Sepultura. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs>